Hello everyone, I'm IT4 from Circuit Gamers and this is another Daisy standalone game theory video. This time I'm going to be talking through the shock mechanic. The last tutorial I did like this was health basics which covered how the health and blood values work. If you'd like to watch that a link will be in the description. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the shock value, the link between blood and shock and how both of those values affect consciousness. This tutorial is going to lead on to future tutorials specifically about defibrillators and EpiPens, two medical items that affect the shock value, and also tutorials about melee weapons and how much shock damage they deal. So let's start off today's video. Here we are with a nice bar graph representing your shock value. Shock is capped at a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 5000, two values that should be familiar to you if you've seen my health basics tutorial. Blood and health also have these ranges. The bar is currently empty because that's what we spawn in on. As a new survivor we have zero shock and this is where we want to be at all times. Low shock is good. Shock is increased by injury. Being shot with a firearm or hit with a melee weapon will increase your current shock value. Impacts to the head cause significantly more shock than impacts to the body. This is why it's important to wear headgear such as a ballistic or motorbike helmet. I'll be covering these in depth in a separate armour and protective clothing tutorial. Now unconsciousness. As I mentioned at the start of this video, consciousness is affected by shock. Let's take a look at the formula used for determining unconsciousness. If shock plus DZ blood unconscious is more than blood. DZ blood unconscious is just a variable which is currently set at 500. So the formula actually looks like this. When calculating unconsciousness, your current shock value is taken, 500 is added to it, and if that total is more than your current blood value, then you'll be knocked out. You'll remain unconscious until shock plus 500 dips back below your current blood level. So clearly we need to do one of two things, either reduce our shock value or increase our blood level. Luckily for us, shock does reduce naturally over time. In fact, it reduces quite rapidly at a rate of negative 30 per second. This is a lot faster than any other values in the game regenerate, although it probably still won't feel that quick in situations where you actually need your shock to go down. Knockout times can still be pretty lengthy. Let's work through a few examples and take a look at what impact these values actually have on gameplay. So at full blood, you're not very susceptible to shock at all. It's going to take a hefty 4,500 shock to knock you out. Even at the maximum of 5,000 shock, the total when added to that extra 500 is only going to be 5,500. So unless the guy that's hit you is constantly beating your head in while you're unconscious, you've only got 500 shock to wear off in order to get up again, which at negative 30 per second is only about 17 seconds. With lower blood, however, shock becomes much more dangerous. It's a lot easier to be knocked out, and knockouts can be significantly longer. If you took two guys, one at full blood and one at half blood, and applied the same amount of shock to both of them, the guy at half blood is going to be out for a lot longer. This is why it's important to try and keep your blood level high. At very low blood levels, you can even end up in a state of permanent unconsciousness. Because of the way the formula works, shock plus 500, you're effectively always on 500 shock. This means that if your blood is below 500, then you're always going to be knocked out. Even if you completely bleed out, you won't die naturally because health does not equal blood anymore. You can check out my previous health basics video for an explanation of how this works. So there's only two ways out of this situation, replenishing blood or death. In these situations, unless you've got a teammate that's going to come over and revive you sometime soon, it's probably best just to die. Losing shock at a rate of negative 30 per second, if we had the maximum 5000 shock, then it would take us 167 seconds to reach zero shock again. So if you've been out longer than that, then you can be pretty sure you're in a state of permanent unconsciousness. I've mentioned natural loss of shock, but you can also reduce your shock immediately by using medical items, such as the EpiPen and the defibrillator. So that is the end of the video. What have we learned today? Well, we've taken a look at the shock value. We've seen the link between shock and blood. We've had a look at how unconsciousness is calculated, and I've given you an explanation for those pesky permanent knockouts. Coming up next time, I'm going to be doing a tutorial about the defibrillator. There's probably a little bit more to the defibrillator than you're aware of. And then at some point, I'm also going to be doing a pretty in-depth tutorial about food and drink, two very important aspects of keeping your character healthy. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a rating, comment any of your opinions and questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you want to keep up to date with my daisy tutorials, make sure you hit subscribe. I shall see you next time.